Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the existence and uniqueness of the solutions of first order initial value problems. We can discuss the existence and uniqueness theorem of the solution of initial value problem. Suppose that D equal to the set of all T comma Y such that A less than or equal to T less than or equal to B and minus infinity less than y less than infinity and that f of ty is continuous on d if f satisfies Lipschitz condition on d in the variable y then the initial value problem y dash of t equal to f of ty t varies from a to b y of a equal to alpha a is the uh, initial point of this interval so this Initial value problem has a unique solution y of t for a less than or equal to t less than or equal to b. So this theorem states that uh, let d be uh, a strip, an infinite strip that is this is the t axis and this is y axis. t varies from a to b. Let this point be a, this point be b. So t varies from a to b and y varies from minus infinity to infinity this is minus infinity to infinity so we have this strip t varies from 0 to uh, a to b and y varies from minus infinity to infinity so this is an infinite strip so this is d so this theorem says that uh, if the function f of ty is continuous on d the function f is continuous on this uh, in infinite strip D. Also, if f satisfies a Lipschitz condition on D in the second variable y, then this IVP has a unique solution y of t for a less than or equal to t less than or equal to b. That is, this IVP has a unique solution on this interval a b. IVP is y dash is equal to f of t y, uh, y of a equal to alpha. So, this IVP has a unique solution if uh, f is continuous and f satisfies Lipschitz condition that is what is this theorem says for example use the above theorem to show that there is a unique solution to the initial value problem y dash is equal to 1 plus t in the sign of ty 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 y of 0 equal to 0 so the here the initial value problem is this so uh, comparing with this initial value problem we have f of t comma y is equal to 1 plus t into sine of t into y this will be f of t y so uh, by the previous theorem that is the, by the existence and uniqueness theorem we can say that if this function f is continuous and uh, it satisfies f satisfies Lipschitz condition on a strip 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 and minus infinity y less than y less than infinity then this IVP has a unique solution in this interval 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2. For that, we know here our function is f of ty equal 1 plus t into sine of ty. So keeping this t as a constant, the function f of ty will be a function of y only. So in that case, we can apply the mean value theorem. We know the mean value theorem uh, for the function f of x is this. If f is a continuous function on the closed interval a b and differentiable on the open interval a b, then there exists a point c in open a b such that f dash of c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So this is the mean value theorem. So we can uh, use this theorem for this function f of t comma y. Here uh, we are fixing the uh, variable t. So f will be a function of y only so uh, and, and we, are, we are choosing the points uh, b and a a and b as the points uh, y1 and y2 so we will get uh, 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 there exists as number zeta belongs to y1 y2 axis uh, such that f of t y2 that is f of uh, y2 minus f of y1 divided by y2 minus y1 is equal to uh, f dash of c here actually uh, so such a zeta f dash of zeta such a zeta exists belongs to uh, y1 y2 
So uh, f of y2 is means that f of t comma y2 minus f of t comma y1 that is f of y1 divided by y2 minus y1 is equal to f dash of zeta that is uh, f is a function of t and y so f dash of zeta means that uh, we are choosing f as a function of y keeping t as a constant so f dash of zeta means dou by dou y of f that is dou f by dou y t comma zeta where y equal to zeta that is dou f by dou y at the point zeta y equal to zeta that is dou f by dou y of uh, t comma zeta so this is nothing but we have f of t y equal to 1 plus t into sin t y so f dash of zeta or dou f by dou y of t comma zeta is equal to or dou f by dou y is nothing but uh, derivative of 1 which is 0 plus t into t is a constant into derivative of sin t y which is cos t y derivative of sin t y is cos t y into t uh, derivative of t y with respect to y that is t so t into t that is t square into cos t y so this is uh, dou f by dou y so at the point uh, y equal to zeta we have dou f by dou y is nothing but t square into cos t zeta so this is f dash of zeta or dou f by dou y of zeta so by mean value theorem we can say that t square into cos zeta t is equal to this so from this taking the modulus we have modulus of this is equal to modulus of this so we have modulus of f t y2 minus f t y1 is equal to this modulus of y2 minus y1 that is modulus of y2 minus y1 into modulus of t square into cos zeta t which is less than or equal to 4 into mod y2 minus y1 because we have uh, t square cos 4t cos zeta t is less than or equal to uh, modulus of cos zeta t is less than or equal to 1 that is because you know minus 1 less than or equal to cos zeta t is less than or equal to 1 and t square is less than or equal to 4 here we have t is less than or equal to 2 so t square is less than or equal to 4 so we have here this t square mod t square is this is actually mod t square into mod cos uh, zeta t so mod cos zeta t is less than or equal to 1 and mod t square is less than or equal to 4 because uh, t is less than or equal to 2 so mod t square is less than or equal to 4 so we have f of t y2 minus f of t y1 is t is less than or equal to 4 into mod y2 minus y1 so we can say that uh, f satisfies Lipschitz condition in the variable y with Lipschitz constant 4 l is equal to 4 also we have f of t y is continuous when 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 and y varies from minus infinity to infinity because we have f of t comma y is equal to 1 plus t into sin t y it was our uh, f of t y so we know this is a continuous function because uh, trigonometric function sin t y is a continuous function t is a continuous function so f of t y is a continuous function for uh, t varies from 0 to t and y varies from minus infinity to infinity so we have obtained that f is continuous on this uh, interval and uh, f satisfies Lipschitz condition also on this interval so by the above theorem we can see that we, uh, we can say that uh, the initial value problem has a unique solution now we have a definition the initial value problem dy by dt equal to f of ty a less than or equal to t less than or equal to b with initial condition y of a equal to alpha this initial value problem is said to be a well posed problem if this ivp has a unique solution y of t Second condition is there exists a con constant uh, epsilon naught is greater than 0 and k is greater than 0 such that for any epsilon in this interval 0 in 0 uh, epsilon naught that is let this be the point epsilon naught so in this interval for any epsilon uh, in this interval uh, whenever delta of t is continuous with uh, modulus of delta of t is less than epsilon and uh, for all t belongs to a b and when modulus of delta naught is less than epsilon the initial value problem dz by dt is equal to f of tz plus delta of t for a less than or equal to t less than or equal to b with the initial condition z of a equal to alpha plus delta naught 
it has a unique solution is it of t that satisfies this condition that is mod of mod of uh, is it of t minus y of t is less than k in the epsilon for all t belongs to a b where is it of t is the solution of this problem and y of t is solution of this given initial value problem so in that case we can say that this initial value problem is well posed uh, here this second problem in this case the second problem is called a perturbed problem associated with the first problem so this initial value problem is said to be well posed problem uh, if it uh, satisfies these two conditions first one is a unique solution y of t exists for this uh, initial value problem second condition is uh, there exists positive constants epsilon naught and k such that for any uh, epsilon belongs to this zero epsilon naught whenever delta of t is continuous with modulus of this is less than epsilon and modulus of delta naught is less than epsilon the initial value problem this initial value problem has a unique solution that satisfies this condition that is the absolute value of mod z z of t minus y of t is less than k into epsilon now we have a theorem suppose d equal to set of all points t comma y such that a less than or equal to t less than or equal to b and minus y minus infinity less than y less than infinity that is the infinite strip that we already discussed d is that infinite strip if f is continuous and satisfies Lipschitz condition in the variable y on this infinite strip d then the initial value problem dy by dt equal to f of ty a less than or equal to t less than or equal to b y of a equal to alpha is well posed. So here we can say that if f is continuous and satisfies the Lipschitz condition we already discussed that in that case uh, this IVP has a unique solution. Also from this theorem we can say that if f is continuous and it satisfies this Lipschitz condition uh, on this interval or the, on this uh, uh, infinite strip then the initial value problem is well posed. Now we can discuss an example show that the initial value problem dy by dt equal to y minus t square plus 1 for t varies from 0 to 2 and y of 0 equal to 0 0.5 this is the initial condition. So uh, show that this initial value problem is well posed on d equal to set of all t y such that 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 and y varies from minus infinity to infinity that is this is 0 to 2 t t means uh, 2 means this this is the d this is the infinite strip d so we have to show that this on this interval uh, on this uh, infinite strip this uh, ivp has a uh, ivp is well posed that is we need to show so for that from the uh, previous theorem we can we need only to show that f is continuous and f satisfies Lipschitz condition then we can say that this IVP is well posed. So here we have the uh, differential equation is dy by dt equal to y minus t square plus 1. So this is f. Therefore f of t comma y is equal to y minus t square plus 1. t varies from 0 to 2 and uh, uh, y varies from minus infinity to infinity. So therefore we can say that f is continuous. f is continuous on d because d is set of all t comma y such that t varies from 0 to 2 and y varies from minus infinity to 2 yeah, infinity so this is a polynomial in y and t so uh, it is continuous so f is continuous now what about dou y by dou, uh, dou f by dou y uh, so uh, now we need to actually we need to uh, show that f satisfies Lipschitz condition so for that we, we already discussed that if uh, uh, dou f by dou y, uh, modulus of dou f by dou y is less than uh, or equal to L, if we can find such L, then we can say that f is satisfied Lipschitz condition with the Lipschitz constant L. So, we can use that theorem to prove that this function uh, f satisfies Lipschitz condition. So, for that we are finding dou f by dou y modulus of dou f by dou y is equal to modulus of dou by dou y of f f equal to y minus t square plus 1 so we are differentiating this f that is y minus t square plus 1 with respect to y partially 
treating T as a constant. So partial derivative of this with respect to y is 1 itself. So modulus of 1 which is equal to 1. Therefore, we can say that mod dou f by dou y is less than or equal to 1. So uh, uh, f satisfies Lipschitz condition in y 1 uh, d with Lipschitz constant 1. Because here we have this is less than or equal to 1. So uh, f satisfies the Lipschitz condition with Lipschitz constant 1. Also, we uh, uh, prove that f is continuous here. So f is continuous and satisfy Lipschitz condition. So from the previous theorem, we can see that the problem is well posed. This initial value problem is well posed. Now you can try to solve these problems yourself.